Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Um, my name is John Hackett. Um, I'm a senior applications engineer um, working for ScienceCo. I'm not a huge fan of the senior bit. It makes me feel older than I really am. Although it's not actually my first time presenting on this stage, it is my first time wearing an orange tie rather than a blue one. So I would like to just take a, a few minutes to talk about ScienceCo, our history, and our legacy. So ScienceCo comes in a continuation of a long company history in the composites industry, where our predecessors, some of which you may recognize the, the, the icons and the company names on the slide here, have helped to shape the, the composites industry as we know it today in the automotive, defense, and airspace sectors. Today at ScienceCo, we aim to continue leading the way by developing new technologies around electrification, hydrogen propulsion, and biosourcing as part of our commitment to advance humanity and leave an indelible impact on the world for years to come. Now, the programs that you can see on here are just a, an illustration of what we've worked on recently um, and in our past. And the products that you can see, it's just a small snapshot of, of what, we've, what we can offer. So if you'd like to know more about, the, about ScienceGo, what we can offer, come and see us on our stand. It's in Hall 5 on K58, um, or I will be available for questions after this presentation in the speaker area just around the corner. Okay, so on to the, the main topic of today, um, where we'll be focusing on compression molding advancements at ScienceCo. So I'll quickly talk about compression molding and its benefits and why we think it's important at ScienceCo. I'll talk about the industrialization of composite molding and why it's so important to hit our cost rate and repeatability targets. I will do a deep dive into one specific compression molding technology, which is ScienceCo's double diaphragm forming or DDF technology. And then I'll spend some time on some specific case studies um, and some future developments in this area. So most of you probably have an idea of what compression molding is. Um, it's a bit of an umbrella term. There's a lot of variance within this process. But the benefits we see can really be summarized as cost, rate, and repeatability. And we think these are the answer to many new market trends. So how do we reduce cost? So by reducing manual labor input, by using an isothermal energy process, we can reduce energy. And because we can make parts so much more quickly, we can actually uh, have an improvement in capex utilization per part. Increase rate, this is probably the obvious one. We're using a hot in, hot out isothermal process, which enables us to use rapid cure resin systems. And we can demonstrate sub two minute cycle times using this technology. And then lastly, repeatability. Probably not something that immediately comes to mind, but because of the reduction in labor and the variability that comes from hand lamination, and because we're actually simplifying the process, we don't have a ramp in temperature, we don't have a ramp in pressure, we don't have a dwell or a cooling phase, we're actually simplifying and removing some of the variables to help improve the robustness and the repeatability of the process. So why is industrialization so important and why are we focusing on this? Um, effectively, we think that the evolving market needs are driving the industrialization of composites. As an example of this, new propulsion technologies, we see electrification, we see hydrogen power, we see hybrid systems. All of these are giving new rise to opportunities for composite materials. We're also therefore seeing brand new design envelopes. So the electric aircraft of tomorrow won't look like the aircraft we're used to today. The self-driving electric air vehicles of tomorrow don't look like the cars we're used to today. And we're also seeing higher rate demands than we've ever seen before. This is giving rise to some brand new opportunities for composite materials. And at ScienceGo, we think compression molding and the innovation of this pro process is the answer to these demands. So when we're tackling the challenge of cost rate and repeatability, the first one that we might think of is cure conversion. Now, just speeding up using chemistry to speed up the cure conversion is just the first step. So the graph that you can see on the right there is a fairly standard degree of cure and temperature trace against time. Moving from the solid line to the much faster cure and dotted line is actually the easy step. We can do this by chemistry relatively easily. The more complex step is tuning our chemistries to the needs of the high rate process kinetics. An example of that is the, the graph on the left here. So this is an ionic viscosity trace. It gives a relative viscosity of the resin going through a process. In this particular case, it's our DDF process, which has three main phases. We have a preheating phase, we then transfer into the press, and then we have a curing stage. Now, the resin viscosity drops during the preheating stage, as you'd expect, but we then see a more significant drop in viscosity as it's transferred into the press. It's only once the mold is fully closed and consolidated, all of the forming has happened during that phase, all of the consolidation of the laminate has happened, 
It's only then that we want the rapid curing system to go off. As you can probably imagine, if you get this wrong and you end up closing the press too late on that viscosity curve, or even too early, where we haven't had a chance to, to reduce the viscosity, you won't have a successful part. So at ScienceGo, we're turning our chemistries and tuning the chemistries to the needs of these processes to work in harmony. So the second area that we think is a challenge is thinking about a paradigm shift from how we get material from the roll to the tool. So the traditional way is by hand and hand manipulation. So the obvious first step is to use mechanization to transfer that manipulation to machine. But even where we have an automated process such as ATL or AFP, we also need to think about whether we use a single head or whether we're moving to multi-heads or even combining material handling um, systems to optimize that, optimize that handling. And we really think that this, it's only through new approaches and material handling and indeed system integration that we're going to be able to meet this demand. And then lastly, we're talking about deposition and simplifying to scale. So hand lamination still has its place. It has a great low initial investment cost, but it's only really suitable for low volumes. ATL or AFP has some fantastic precision, but we still have a deposition rate issue. If we really want to meet the, uh, sort of the, the holy grail of low initial investment, optimized deposition rate, and also deposition precision, not only do we think pick and place is the, is the future, but we're really focusing on 2D pick and place. So the graph you can see here um, is showing 3D tape placement in the orange line, and then there's 2D tape placement in the blue line. And as you can see, in terms of deposition rate, so material that we're laying down in kilograms per hour, we can see that 2D is two, three, or even four times the rate. So we're turning our chemistry to the needs of these high rate requirements so that they perfectly match. Okay, so we've got our perfectly fast laid 2D blank. It's precise, it's cost effective, it's at high rates. How do we then form a 3D part? So at ScienceCo, we've got a fantastic technology called ScienceCo's Double Diaphragm Forming, or DDF. Um, if the video plays now, I'll, have a, I'll talk you through the process um, in a bit more detail. So ScienceGo sees DDF as a key technology. Um, it uses an end-to-end -end automation. So from the roll at the start to the finished part at the end is a fully automated process. ScienceGo sees this as a key technology. Um, it enables cost-effective use of composites for high-volume applications. Now, this is obviously a, an animation of a CAD representation, but what we've done at ScienceCo is we've, we've put this into reality. There's four main steps. Blank encapsulation, step two, sorry, blank creation, blank encapsulation, the preheating and compression molding phase, and then indeed the part removal. So all of these phases can be automated. And what we've done in our HENA application center in the UK is we've turned this from concept into reality. So this is a fully industrialized, fully automated manufacturing cell that's available in HENA. All of these steps from cutting the material to the blank creation is done completely free of human hands. This is all automated in a single manufacturing process. The DDF encapsulation, the compression molding and the part retrieval, all fully automated. And as you'll see, all the robots are working simultaneously to be able to create a continuous production process. I'll be quiet for a couple of minutes now just to let you watch the, the, through the, the video in a bit more detail. It'll talk about the process uh, and each individual process step. So as I mentioned, this is a fully automated, fully industrialized manufacturing line built purely for development and research purposes. So it's available for our internal use and our customers use 
purely to advance the development of compression molding. So what are the advantages of DDF? So firstly, you can use existing infrastructure. So ideally press infrastructure, uh, but also in, indeed the cutting bed. So both the press and the cutting bed that you saw in that video were existing pieces of equipment that we've integrated into this cell. It achieves complex geometry in a one-step forming process. So all of the parts that you can see there um, uh, have been formed from a single flat blank into that complex geometry in a single molding step. Because the resin never actually comes into contact with the mold, there's no need for mold release, there's no need for mold cleaning in between each step. There's also a benefit from isolation from environment. So if your press hall doesn't happen to be in a clean room environment, you can actually assemble these blanks uh, in the frames or in between the, the, the diaphragm films and then transfer to your press hall with uh, no concern over contamination. As you saw, it's a highly automatable process. Inline inspection control is not only possible, it's actually simplified because you only have to inspect the 2D blank rather than the 3D blank. It's repeatable, it's robust, we can reduce tack time and indeed reduce labor input. So DDF is a low cost forming technology capable of high rate manufacturing. I'm now gonna spend some time um, talking about some specific case studies um, where we've been using composite compression molding and also some future de developments that we'll be working on in the near future. So the first one, um, ideally suited to automotive, but is potentially uh, applicable to other industries as well, but it's class A and visual carbon body panels. So we can use this to create help with a class A painted finish. So if you need a, uh, an automotive grade class A painted finish, we have products that can achieve this, but it's also suitable for visual quality carbon look. So if you need your two by two woven twill, looking absolutely perfect, we can also achieve this. It's suitable for hot compression molding, but also our DDF process. We can see tack times of under 12 minutes using our Solverlight range of products. Primarily, our focus is Solverlight 714 at the moment uh, with an optional surfacing film, um, the SF2000 surfacing film, which gives you your, your Class A paintable surface. The parts that you can actually see here um, have been, been manufactured using previous generations of Solverlight products, but the results are very similar. The M4 GTS hood. So this was a painted class A outer hood, as well as a, a complex inner, for, inner component. Um, both of those components were made using the DDF compression molding process. Porsche GT3 RS, so the outer on this particular example is a class A painted finish, and then the inner is a carbon look VQ carbon, both uh, which achieved using compression molding. So onto the next example, complex double, double diaphragm forming. So, I highlighted before that di double diaphragm forming can be used to create highly complex structures. Here's an example. This is a door in a component, and although it's a demonstrator rather than a uh, commercial part, uh, it has been made in conjunction with a major automotive OEM. So as you can see, this not as only complex uh, geometry, but it was actually not considered possible um, to manufacture this by hand without using cut starts and overlaps. As well as the complex geometry, we've also got a thickness variation. So there's ply drops within this part that have all been formed within a single molding process. I also mentioned earlier that cost of these, these parts can actually be, um, be a benefit compared to more traditional um, methods. As part of this program, we did compare the DDF cost of this part to an autoclave process. And over just a single uh, one year duration period, the crossover point at which DDF became more cost effective and therefore cheaper than the autoclave was just 1,100 parts per year. So relatively low uh, program, relatively low volumes at very relatively short program length. So next advancement is a, a high temperature double diaphragm forming technology. So one of the limitations that we've had in the past is that uh, is the upper temperature of which we could form um, DDF technology. We've now developed high temperature prepreg films and, and prepreg systems uh, that work with the same self-releasing technology as we have with regular DDF. Only now we can cure up to 180 degrees, making it suitable for aero capable products, such as Psycom EP2750, Psycom 5320-1 and MTM45-1. The example you can see here is EP2750 with an eight harness reinforcement and that's been cured at 20 minutes, 180 degrees, no post cure required and we have an aero quality product. 
we can also go faster as well. So uh, if we're looking at faster curing times as low as five minutes at 160 degrees, um, we can use other resin systems such as Solvolite 714 or MTM 46. I also mentioned at the start about our commitment to electrification, and, and this is a key example of that. So Solvolite 716FR um, is ideally suited to battery applications. Um, it's a flame retardant, fire retardant, uh, rapid cure epoxy system. So we can compression mold this in just eight minutes at 150 degrees Celsius, um, and you can hot demold it as well. It's a non-halogenated um, epoxy formulation, so it achieves UL94 V0. And using the UL2596, as you'll see in the, the lower image here, we can pass the battery thermal runaway test at just 1.6 millimeters in thickness. It has a tailored FR package, so we get all of the FR performance without sacrificing viscosity, density, or the use of SVHCs. It's available on a range of glass and carbon products, um, specifically targeting the automotive sector, but I would like to highlight that we are actively working on aerospace battery enclosure technology as well. Spring frame molding. So, um, we have worked as part of the RAMP program, which was a DARPA and Boeing co-funded program on a novel spring frame uh, technology, although a similar result can be achieved via DDF. In this particular case, we were using SICOM EP2750, and in a sub 30 minute tack time, we were able to create these parts, as you can see here. Now, as part of this program, um, there was also a comparison of this particular process to a more traditional out of autoclave um, process. Effectively, the results is that using this process, you could get over 10,000 parts a year compared to around 800 parts a year. So this is an independent study comparing out of autoclave to the rate capability of compression molding. And you can see the, uh, the significant difference there. Okay, uh, NCANT qualification. Um, this is actually a really exciting project. Um, I don't have any pretty parts because it's effectively all just flat panels. Um, but we do have one of our lovely Langzana presses. We've got three now in Hina. Um, we're a bit of a fan. But this project is quite interesting because we think it's, uh, to our knowledge, it's the first compression molded composite material that will be added to the NCAMP database. So this is a SICOM EP2750 in an eight harness and a 12 reinforcement. Um, and these laminates are being molded right now as we speak and tested in HENA in our application center in the UK. So final case study example, um, just to say that we don't only do automotive and aerospace. Um, and here's an example of a newly launched Swiftply, which is a material specifically designed for the electronic market. So in this case, Swiftply 6200, it's a compression molding multiple process. And it has a couple of really interesting key benefits. One of which is the extended out life, which means that we can ship this material globally, internationally, without the need for refrigerated or frozen storage. Meaning that we're not only reducing the cost of shipping, but the carbon impact of the shipping of this material as well. There's a UL94HB version, but also a UL94V0 variant available. It's available in a range of different product formats, but including a quite unique unidirectional ceramic product that only, not only gives you the high stiffness, but it gives you dielectric transparency for the use in 5G applications. So you'll see on the graph here, you, the Swift Pro products compared to uh, more traditional products not only give you incredible stiffness, um, they give you even higher specific stiffness, and we have the option of dielectric transparency. This is obviously going to mean that in your electronic components, you can reduce thickness. It gives you added design flexibility, good thermal management, good electrical insulation, transparency to electromagnetic waves, and overall a cost efficient option. Okay, moving on to a couple more slides just about the uh, future of what we're working on now and will be readily available uh, in the near future. Firstly, sandwich compression molding. So we're working on some new materials and some novel techniques where we think we can significantly reduce the manufacturing time and cost of sandwich compression molded panels. So in this particular example, this part here has been uh, molded as a single component. So it's a single molding step um, with a sub 30 minute tack time. Um, and we think we can actually reduce that uh, using alternative materials, so we could further reduce that tack time as well. Um, and lastly, I'd like to touch on our ICOMAT developments. So um, ICOMAT, and in particular their rapid tape shearing or RTS process. Um, if you're not familiar with this process, it's worth checking out. Um, I know they're here, here, here at the stand, um, but it's a really uh, interesting novel uh, process with some um, completely, completely unique benefits effectively. So much so that um, Psychomat 
uh, yeah, Psychomat. Uh, Science Co. and Icomat are collaborating uh, together where we will host one of the Icomat RTS cells in our own facility in Yina. So through this collaboration, we uh, aim to increase the development activities, uh, enable proof of concept. We'll be able to demonstrate to the customers this technology, but it will also directly give Science Co. feedback of how we can optimize materials for this offering. So in conclusion, um, we think that the reliance on manual labor is always going to compromise of composite. <laughs> Apologies. We think that the reliance of manual labor will always limit the adoptions of high rates, so we need to innovate. We think mechanization and automation are key to further growth. We think that increase in build rates, uh, tack times are going to have to be reduced to something more in line with metallic pressing. And with the aid of to aid industrialization, we think new processes such as DDF are going to be required. If I've had to quickly go over quite a broad range of topics there, so if any of that has sparked your interest and you'd like to know more, um, our stand is in this hall, it's hall five, it's on K58. But I'll also be available after the show, uh, the presentation shortly, uh, just around the corner. So if we, if we run out of time for questions, um, you can maybe come and find me afterwards. Uh, once again, thank you for your time. I'm John Hackett. Um, I think we might have time for a couple of questions. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for your time, everyone.